Can we get Docker Desktop features without having Docker Desktop? Do we have an alternative to Docker Desktop now that uh, under certain conditions we might be forced to pay for using it? Somewhere around September 2021, Docker announced that uh, depending on conditions and the number of users and who is using Docker Desktop, we might have to pay $5 or more per user. So I wanted to explore the alternatives to using Docker Desktop. Now, before we proceed, let me say that I do think that we should be paying for software that provides business value, that helps us in our business, but there are cases where we might want to opt for free alternatives. And I would like to explore what those alternatives are. And why would we look for those alternatives in the first place? Well, maybe you don't want to pay $5 per user or even higher, depending on what you're looking for. Maybe you do not need all the Docker desktop features that are for paying customers, and yet you would have to pay anyways, and so on and so forth. There are many reasons why you might want to look for a free alternative. One of the reasons might be that you want to invest that money by joining this channel and supporting this channel so that uh, it can continue thriving and uh, so that I can pay the bills. That could be a reason as well. Anyways, before we explore the alternatives, let me say what are my requirements for a potential replacement for Docker Desktop. It needs to be able to run containers. That's kind of obvious. It needs to be able to build and push containers to a registry. It would be nice, even though it's not a requirement, but it would be really good if that replacement can also run a Kubernetes cluster. So that I can have one tool for everything container related locally. You know, run containers, even though I'm not running containers directly much anymore, I build container images and run a Kubernetes cluster in which I'm going to run containers. And here comes the most important one. I do not necessarily want to change my habits. So I would like that alternative, that replacement of Docker Desktop to look and behave in the same way as Docker Desktop itself. I do not necessarily need the user interface. I'm never using it really, but I do want the commands that I'm commonly executing to continue existing in the same form. Those would be like uh, Docker image build, Docker image tag, Docker image push, maybe Docker container run and a few others. Since this is about replacing Docker Desktop with something else, I'm going to exclude Linux because Docker Desktop, as far as I know, never worked or never existed for Linux. So this is mostly a story about Windows users or macOS users, especially macOS users, because in Windows you can actually run WSL, which gives you a Linux subsystem and you could actually pretend that you're on Linux and then everything would more or less work. And in that case, I'm not sure whether you would need Docker Desktop anyways. But even in those cases, you know, when you're running Linux or maybe WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux, even in those situations, I think that Docker Desktop is a great solution simply because it creates a virtual machine. So I can easily destroy everything I did instead of hunting down individual containers and trying to figure out what is still running, what is not running. Or So I think that a lightweight virtual machine is actually a very good thing, even when we are not required to use it. So the first potential solution would be, hey, I could create my own virtual machine as long as I have Docker over there and I could connect from my terminal to the Docker running in that machine, I would get more or less the same, but that might be too much hassle. Uh, I just want something simple. I just want something transparent. So I'm going to exclude the option of creating my own virtual machines, even though I do think that we need in some form or another virtual machine for all this to happen, just as Docker Desktop is using a virtual machine, even though you might not be aware of I will exclude immediately solutions like Kind and K3D for running Kubernetes clusters, first of all, because they provide only part of the story. They would not solve the need to build container images and push them and do whatever we are doing with container images. And on top of them, they do not work without Docker Engine. And for Docker Engine, we need a virtual machine. So we are back to the very beginning. So 
kind and K3D are out of the picture. I could start using Builda and Podman, but that does not give me the same feeling and the same experience I have with Docker. And I really, really, really like the experience of using Docker CLI. So I want that experience to stay. That means that Podman and Builda are out of the picture. I mean, they could be made to look and feel like Docker, but again, it's too much work involved. I want something extremely simple. And I can continue excluding solutions that simply do not fit my needs, but I'm going to jump straight into what the solution is. And that solution is Minikube. Minikube can be a complete replacement of all the important parts of Docker Desktop. It is not a full replacement, it will not give us everything that Docker Desktop has, especially not the UI and a few features related with security and users, but the common functionalities that we do with Docker, like building images, pushing images, running containers, and potentially running a Kubernetes cluster in Docker Desktop, that's all provided with Minikube as long as we set it up correctly. And that's what I'm going to show you in a moment, but before I do, let me quickly explain how Docker works works in general, a simplified version, just in case. Docker is client-server type of architecture. We have a client, which is a CLI, that's Docker. You know, whenever you execute Docker something command, you are using the CLI, and that CLI is sending instructions to the server, to the engine running somewhere. And that somewhere can be a VM on your laptop, it could be even directly on your laptop if you're using Linux, or it could be a real server somewhere else. So there is always that client-server communication and we need to solve both. Actually, we do not need to solve both because the CLI is free, it is open source, you do not need to pay anybody anything to run Docker CLI. And you do not need to pay anybody anything to run Docker Engine. What you are paying is for a package. You are paying for Docker Engine running in a VM and having a few additional features, which I'm going to exclude for now because they're not really critical. So we need a client and we need an engine running somewhere. Client is free, you can just go and install Docker. I will provide the link in the description and you have the client solved. For the server part, for the engine part, we need two things. We need to install Minikube and we need to install HyperKit. Actually, HyperKit is not a requirement. You can run Minikube in many other modes, but for the purposes of this demo, I will be using HyperKit. So three requirements. Docker CLI, Minikube, and HyperKit. Install those, the links are in the description. Now, assuming that you installed all that, first thing I'm going to do is confirm, prove to you that I do not have Docker desktop running or anything of the kind by executing Docker container ls. I'm going to try to list all the containers and I'm getting an error saying, hey, the client, the CLI cannot communicate through the socket with the Docker engine, so nothing can be done. And that's the thing that we need to solve. If we solve that communication, if we manage to make Docker engine running, we can continue using the CLI in the same way we would be normally using it with Docker Desktop, as long as we solve that one problem. So let me start Minikube by executing Minikube start, and I'm going to use HyperKit as the driver. Remember, you can use a different driver, even though I really recommend HyperKit. Now the key here is in environment variables. Docker CLI knows how to talk with Docker Engine through environment variables. I mean, there are different ways to do it, but environment variables are the most common ones. So if you can tell Docker CLI how to communicate with Docker engine that is right now running in the Minikube that we started, we will have the solution fixed. It will all work. So the key is in the environment variables. And luckily for us, Minikube already provides those variables. We can execute Minikube docker env and let's see what we'll get. There you go. Those are the environment variables Docker CLI needs to know how and where to find the engine. But that command just output those variables on the screen. So what we need to do is evaluate that output. And now the variables are all set, they are exported, and the time has come to test whether Docker CLI works correctly. So let's try it out. Let's start with listing all the containers. You know, the command that I executed a few minutes ago and the one that failed. And this time the output is not an error. This time I got all the containers. Those are all the containers 
currently running in Minikube. Now let's see whether building an image works by executing docker image build and then the tag and dot that points to the current directory. That worked as well. Success. Next, let's see whether we can run containers and the command is docker container run, etc, etc, etc. And we can see that the output is as expected with the message, is it working? Yes, it is working. And the last thing I want to double check is whether I can use docker compose. So docker compose up, I want to run it in detached mode and then I need to wait for a few moments, waiting and waiting and waiting and there we are. Similarly, I can destroy everything I created with docker compose. There is probably no point continuing and verifying all the commands, they will work. All docker commands will work as long as there is a docker engine running somewhere and it is running in the VM created by Minikube and it is accessible through the environment variables that we get from Minikube cube as well. The last commands that I executed, you know, to run containers and to use Docker Compose, I do not think that you should ever, ever, ever use those. And I know that now you're saying, hey, I like Docker Compose, it's so fantastic, it's so easy, and it is fantastic, and it is easy, but since you're most likely going to run those things in production in a Kubernetes cluster, then it's same effort or actually less effort to run it as Kubernetes manifests, you know, just do kubectl apply against the same manifest that you're running in production, maybe scale down version of those manifests. So I would not really recommend that anybody should run directly containers or use Docker Compose when you already have the manifests and you can just as easily run things in Kubernetes. And with Minikube, you have Kubernetes together with Docker Engine. So you got not only Docker Engine, but you got Kubernetes as well, which is yet another thing that Docker Desktop provides. And everything that really, really, really matters is the ability to have Docker Engine. And now we have Docker Engine in Minikube. And assuming that you're comfortable with the CLI and you do not need the UI that Docker Desktop provides, and maybe a few features that are very important for companies, but not for individuals, then Minikube is just as good and in some ways maybe even better than Docker Desktop. All that being said, I think that Docker Desktop is fantastic and I think that you should be using Docker Desktop and it continues being free for individual users and it continues being free for small companies and only big companies like over 250 employees and more than 10 million in annual revenue need to pay something and I think that that's fair. But if you do not agree, if you want a free alternative, it is extremely easy to get it. Minikube is the free alternative to Docker Desktop. It is free, it is open source, you do not need to pay anybody anything, even though that does not mean that you shouldn't support Docker. And while speaking about supporting something, I suggest that you support this channel. There are membership options now, go and check them out. It's a very low monthly fee that would help this channel continue existing, because believe it or no, there are expenses that are required for this channel to continue to operate. There's equipment, there are people that need to be paid to do the editing and animations and so on and so forth. So I'm encouraging you to support this channel by checking the join button that is below me uh, if you can spare a few bucks. I hope this was useful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.